Dear viewer, welcome again to our special moment where we meet with the Lord every day in this period of 40 days of prayer. And we are on day 8. So far, God has been so gracious. And this morning, we are focusing on ministering to our family members. And so we are talking about reaching the family members or reaching your family. We will be gathered by a text from the book of 1 Timothy, uh, chapter number 5 and verse number 8, uh, which I will read in your hearing, uh, Timothy, first letter of Timothy, uh, chapter 5 and verse number 8. The word of God says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and he is worse than an infidel. I'll read one more time. But if any, prov any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and he is worse than infidel. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for this precious moment. As we speak through this text, Lord, I pray that it may be an inspiration moment for us as we seek you this morning in prayer. I pray the Lord you will touch our thoughts and our hearts that we will be in line with you and bless us through this word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are talking about providing for the family. Providing for the family. You know, this is a very uh, important text, of course. Paul is, 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 is addressing and talking to um, uh, Timothy that Timothy may be able to go and guide the church. But then, of course... Literally, Paul is talking about providing food for the family, providing, you know, um, materially for the family, uh, economically for the family, being there for your family that they have the resources, the basic needs and, and you know, the resources that they require for them to live a better comfortable life in this world. But I want to take this a little deeper and talk about spiritual provision. I know we, we know, many of us, we, we know how to provide for our families. Of course, I know there are a few uh, people who even the physical needs for their family, they have neglected. Now, the Bible is very clear that there is God will have an issue with you if you do not provide for your family. So, wake up, wake up from your home and... Uh, Walk out and, and, and go and do something for your family. You, you know, I know these days, you know, employment is a big challenge and you may not have, you know, gotten the job you're looking for. But don't, don't, don't sit at home. Don't sit at home and start begging. You know, don't beg at home. Uh, because you, you, you are an engineer and you have not gotten that employment or you are whatever, you have not gotten that job. Please work because you have your hands. You can be doing something as you wait for what you've been looking for. So let none kindly sit at home. Because they have not been employed, they are, there's, they are, I mean, there are no employment. No. Rise up. Go and do something. Just go do something. Do something. Do something. So long as it's something that does not contradict your faith, go and do something. Go and do something. Yes. Unezenda kwa mjengo. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ata kama kuna degree. Unezenda kwa mjengo. Instead of you borrowing and asking and begging, you can do something. A day, 500 bag or something like that. It, it, it's good for you. But don't just sit at home. Don't sit at home. There are many things you can do. Yeah? And, and so, we are, we are talking about, God is advising us here through Paul that especially as men, we can't give any genuine reason or excuse to sit idly at home because we have not been called for an interview or we have not been given an appointment letter. We can do something with our hands as we wait. But let me talk about spiritual provision, spiritual food. I find it in the Bible that those who have come into the light of the gospel are the fathers, the spiritual fathers. I know you could be a woman, you could be a, 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 a lady, you could be a gentleman or whatever. Those of us who have already come to Christ, we have come to the light of the gospel. We are then in this context the providers. The, 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 the spiritual food is provided and served by those who 
have received it. You don't give out what you don't have. And so if Christ has invited you and you have come to him, you know him, that it, then you become a provider of the gospel. So the people in your family, the people in your community are your family members. And so if you're not providing for them, if you're not reaching out to them to provide for them the word of God, you see, Christ says, Men shall not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. Here's why he says, you know, he spoke to the disciples and told them, I have, I have food which you know not of. He is speaking about the word of God. He himself says, I am the bread of life. You see, and he says, whoever eats me shall not hunger again. You know, we are talking about the spiritual food. And it is you who is already in the family of God, who is spiritually supplied to become the, the provider, the supplier of this gospel. So the Bible says here then, but if anyone provide not, so if you preach not, if you evangelize not, if you don't share the gospel with your people, your friends, if you don't touch people with God's love, if you don't tell them that Christ is their Savior, if you don't tell them that He's coming soon to take them home, if any provide not for His own, His own family members, His own friends, His own community, if you do not provide and especially for those of his own house, hmm. he has denied the faith. Do you have family members, your immediate family members, who are not of your faith? Do you have family members or external family members who have not accepted Christ? They are still in the world, drinking and doing drugs and all kind of, you know, life here on earth. Busy in the world, yet you come to church every Sabbath. Yet you come to church and you worship God and you go home and you see your family is okay. But a brother's family is not in church. Your sister's family is not in church. Does that bother you? No. God has brought you this light that you may become the light in your big family. God has provided for you the knowledge of true God. That you may provide for your big family the knowledge of true God. If you're not doing this, you're denying your faith. And so this is very important today. As we, we get to the moment of prayer, God is inviting us to know that this word which he has given to us is not for us. It's for us, yes, but to share. It is for us to share. Share with your friends. I, you know, I've been asking you every, every day when I come here that if this, this particular moment blesses you, please share this link with your friends. But I'm not sure whether you have shared. Maybe you're saying, ah, oh, pastor. It's okay. They'll get it the way I got it. The Bible says here, if you're not providing for people, you are denying your faith. You're denying the faith. And so I'm just asking you today, Share. You see, if you cannot preach like Paul, <laughs> you can't tell the neighbors around you the love of Jesus. You, you can do good things to them. You can just click a button on your phone, just click that button, just click and share with your friend. You are providing for them. You see, yesterday, um, um, yesterday one of the viewers got this message for the first time. And he called me and said, Pastor, I didn't know that there's a season for four days of prayer. A friend shared with me this video. I said, you're the one who is there in the video speaking to us. It came to me at the right time. Can you imagine that? And thank you for whoever shared that. That this person testified says, it came to him at the right time. He needed to hear that message. 
thank you for those who are sharing. And I'm here to encourage you today to share and share and share with as many as you can. Even that person that you think is not interested, just share with them. You'll be surprised. That is what they were waiting for. The share. Not just these videos and these messages, but share your life with people. Share both your material life, your physical life, and your spiritual life with people. Share them of how you care for them. Share them of how God cares for them. So as we pray today, are there people that you have deprived, they are starving, because they're not providing for them the spiritual food. You have a moment to talk to the Lord and ask God to forgive you. And give you more insight, understanding, and clarity of what this exactly means. That you can partner with heaven. Reaching out to many who are perishing without hope. That they may have this hope. Just push it to them. Just push it to them. Just push it to them. Leave the thing with them. God shall work in their hearts. And we shall hear testimonies of what God has done. Just because you provided for them. Invite them to church. Just, just invite them. Come along with me. Come along with me. We are having, especially here in our church, we're still running the store and ship week of prayer. Just invite a friend. Share the links that the pastor is preaching here every day. Share with them. That is how we provide for the people that we love, for the people that we care about. Just provide for them. So as we pray, do you have somebody you're thinking about today that you need to provide spiritually? You may not be a pastor like myself. You may not know how to do Bible studies with them, but for sure you can write a message for them, to them and tell them, God loves you. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you, sister. I'm praying for you, brother. I know you're going through difficult times, but if God cares for you. God knows you. Is there anything we can pray for? Just encourage somebody, provide for them. You never know. Maybe they needed you for such a time. Like this. Don't ignore. Don't ignore. Don't ignore. Don't take lightly. People are afflicted. People are troubled. People are stressed. People are hopeless. They are looking for somebody who can give them hope. And that person is you. Yes, you. Just share with them. Tell them that God cares for them. Pray for them. And so if you have not chosen the seven people you have been asking you to choose, please have a list of seven people that you shall be providing for them every single day in this season of 40 days of prayer. So come with me. As we pray. Gracious Father in heaven. Thank you for this precious moment. When we are at your feet. You have reminded us Lord. That being your disciples is a responsibility. That we need to reach out to people. Within our families. Within our neighborhood. Within our societies within our workplaces, with the heavenly food that we are the ones to provide for them. Because you are saying whoever does not provide for his people is worse than unbeliever. And so my father, we are praying today that you may help us to see the opportunities that we have to share your gospel. The many opportunities we have today in this life, in this age, the technology that has come away to enable us to share so easily, providing for people who are hopeless in darkness. Lord, encourage us to know, just by a click of a button, it can change somebody's life. That we will not be selfish, but we will not be ashamed but we'll aggressively share this gospel. Aggressively share this gospel of soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. By simple messages like these ones. By simple Bible verses sharing every day. 
There are many ways that we can encourage people and lead them to you. God, remind us one more time in our prayer life that we are the spiritual fathers of those around us. That we will have hearts to desire to rise every hour in the morning to share the good news that we have from you. Bless us, my Father. Revive us, God, we pray. And make us disciple makers that not us only, but many that we will have influenced shall all be prepared for the second coming. Remind us, we don't have all to be pastors. We just need to be your disciples. That is enough to disciple other people. So Lord, may you give us the power of the Holy Spirit to understand your word, to have a discerning mind and a yearning spirit to be co-laborers together with you. Fill us with your spirit. Revive us, my Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer. God may bless you. Remember, God expects you to provide for your family both materially and spiritually. God expects you to provide for your friends, for your neighbors, for all that you know and you care for, even the ones who think that they don't mind, even those that you think they don't care, even those that you, you, you think they are not your friends, they are not interested, just share with them and you shall be amazed at how God is going to transform their lives. See you tomorrow. May God bless you.